meeting. Um, I want us to take a moment to open in a word of prayer. And then we are going to start this meeting. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we are grateful to you. We are grateful Father, we are grateful you are a faithful for a time to meet people. To make known to us your purposes, your will, and your plan. Father, we are so grateful, Lord Almighty God, for this Lord Almighty God time you have afforded us in your presence. Lord Almighty God, time to worship, time to seek your face, time to bless you. Amen. Well, family, I I want to take this moment once again to greet those that joined us through our Facebook page. Um, I can see there's quite a few people that have joined us. Um, I'll just mention those that I can and jump quickly. I mean, our time, we're already halfway through it. Mamu Mzilikazi, Mamu Simelela, uh, I greet everyone, beloved, even those that I have not seen. I greet you and I welcome you. Because of time, I will jump straight to, you know, the message. I can see that Ube Taylor also has joined. Um, so there might be others that are missing. Um, so um, we are pushing for time. The theme for today is that things can change. Things can change. I think this is very important for us to embrace. Um, you know, this is a truth that we must take to heart. Whatever, you know, circumstance or situation or state we find ourselves in, we must know that things can change. So if you feel like you are at the end of your rope, you feel like you're at your wit's end, you feel that there is no going further, I want you to know things can change. This is so important, beloved. Um, let us look at our first prayer point, Ezekiel chapter 37, verses 1 to 3. Ezekiel 37, verses 1 to 3. The hand of the Lord was upon me, and he brought me out in the spirit of the Lord, 
and set me down in the middle of the valley. It was full of bones. And he said to me, uh, rather, and he led me around among them. And behold, there were very many on the surface of the valley. And behold, they were very dry. And then it goes on to say, and he said to me, son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, oh Lord, God, you know. Beloved, I want you to know that, uh, in fact, you, you, you know, you know for sure in your own life that when things, you know, are going on for a long time, it seems like they are permanent in your life and it seems like they can never change, especially if the longer they take, the worse they get. You see, it's one thing for things to remain the same for long, but it's something else for them to, you know, continue for the worst. In, in the case, you know, um, of these dry bones, the Bible says that they were many, they were dry, they were very dry, and they were scattered. It's just... It's just a bad, you know, situation. Not only are they many. Now, first the Bible says they are in the middle of a valley. What is a valley? A valley is a low between two highs. A valley is a low place between two mountains. So you have high peaks, two, two peaks, two, two highs. In between them, the place in between them is a valley. So maybe you are in that place. You know, you're between two highs. You are in a low place. The second thing is that it is full of bones. Okay, it is full of bones. And now, not only were these bones many, the Bible says that they were very dry. So I want you, I want you to have this picture. You know, this could be a description of somebody's life you know, situation right now. That in like Zamzi means is in Kulu and Quinda Wanje, that is low in life. But I want you to know that things can change. In fact, God asked Ezekiel, can these bones live? It's as if God is asking, can this situation change? And Ezekiel in his wisdom, he realized, well, ish. This is, this is too much for me because I don't see the possibility, but I will not say no. So what it does is that it goes back to God. He says, God, only you know. You're the one that knows. So I want you, wherever you are, to understand things can change. Things can change. And I think that's the question, God, and this is a question of faith. You know, do you believe that God can do it in your life? Do you believe that things can change? As we speak about work, as we speak about diligence, you know, there are people that hear such messages and I'm like, you know what? I tried, I'm done. I'm not going to hurt myself again, you know, by leading myself to disappointments. I'm not going to try again, but I want to challenge you to try again. I want to challenge you, you know, to speak the word. In fact, God challenged you as a kill. Who took as a kill prophesied. In other words, begin to speak the heart of God. Begin to speak what you hear from God. Don't speak your circumstances. Don't speak your experiences. Don't speak your situations. Speak the word of God. So here is a question. Yes, the, the problems are many. The challenges are big. You know, the problems are deeper. Now the question is, do you believe that the situation can change? Do you believe that God can turn it around? So that, that, that's what you're trying to bring across right now. Oh, Matthew chapter 19, verse 26 but Jesus looked at them and said, with man, this is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. And that's, that, that's, that's the message the Lord will say to you to say, look, this with man is impossible. No, no man can take you out of this, but with God, in other words, when God is with you, it also means in God's hand. So I want you to see those two distinctions I'm making right now. With God, in other words, your situation is so big, you've tried with your friend, you tried with your neighbors, you tried with your employer, you tried with your employment. So with man, this thing is impossible, but with God, in other words, if God is with you, then you can do it. But with God, all things are possible. Listen to this, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So through God, with God, all things are possible. So I want you to see this as a partnership. 
you know i know many people interpret this to mean when god does it but i want you to hear it this way when i do it with god when i do it with god all things are possible i want you to have that interpretation with god it's not possible with man in other words if i'm partnered with man it's not possible but if i'm partnered with god it's possible okay so do you believe these bones can live with god all things are possible in fact Luke 137 says for nothing will possible with God. So if God is on my side, if God is in my team, maybe the most accurate way is to say, if I'm in God's side, if I'm in God's team, then all things are possible and nothing is impossible for I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So I want you right now to begin to speak to your heart, begin to speak to your heart and begin to speak to those situations and declare that things can change and things will change because God is on your side. You are on God's side and God is our is our help. Our help comes from the Lord. Let us pray right now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Father, we want to pray right now. And we make intercession for those that, Lord Almighty God, are, are facing Lord Almighty God challenges that are facing problems, Lord Almighty God, that are dealing with things. Lord, I want to commit them to you right now. Those that are in a stage where, Lord, I find it difficult to believe. Lord Almighty God, those that see their situation as impossible. Those that are in a valley, Lord, surrounded by dry bones. Those that are in a low place, in a place of discouragement, in a place, Lord, where they are ready to give up and throw the towel, where they don't think, Lord, things can change. I want to pray right now, your children to see, Lord, that with you all things are possible. With God, all things are possible. With God, Goliath can come down. With God, Goliath can fall. With God, Coronavirus can fall with God, Lord Almighty God, the plans, the future, the business, Lord Almighty God, the churches can stand in the name of Jesus with God. All things are possible. So right now, we refuse to be defaulted, we refuse to give up, we refuse to throw the towel, we speak to the bones. Now, Lord, even in the valley, we declare there's a rising up. Oh Lord, you promised them to fill valleys and make straight the cool. And, bottom and level mountains. And right now we stand on your promise. Believing Lord, make a way in the wilderness. You make rivers in the desert. You do the impossible. All with you, oh God. Nothing will be impossible. Lord of oh to God, there's nothing too hard for you. Nothing too hard for you. Lord, you give children to the barren. There's nothing too hard for you. You cause me to come out of the Lord of God to fall from the sky. To come from the rock. There is nothing too hard for you. And right now we claim you caused Elizabeth to bear a child at old age. You caused Mary to have a child without knowing a man. Nothing is impossible with you. You gave David, Lord of God, to God, what it took to bring down Goliath. Nothing is impossible with you. You caused Nehemiah to build a wall. Lord, in two days, oh God, all things are possible with God. So this evening, Lord, we embrace this truth. Lord, a mighty God, that with man, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. Dry bones can come to life. Bones can turn to an army. Bones can 
become a mighty army of God. And right now, to our families, we declare that the dry bones of our families are coming to life. We declare, Lord, the impossible conditions of our children are coming to life. Lord, we speak life. We speak life in the glorious name of Jesus. These bones shall live in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want us right now to look at 2 Samuel chapter 5, verse 6 to 7. 2 Samuel chapter 5, verses 6 to 7. It says, And the king and his men went to Jerusalem against the Jebusites, the inhabitants of the land, who said to David, You will not come in here. Other version says, You cannot come in here. In other words, the Jebusites, you know, they were so confident that, you know, when they have put, you know, um, a stumbling block, nobody can go beyond it. They say, this is the end. They've drawn the line. So they said to David, you cannot come in here, but the blind and the lame would ward you off. They were so confident. They were referring to their idols. You know, they were so confident that you cannot come in here. They were saying our stronghold is so strong that we can send the blind and the lame to defend our territory from you. The, and the Bible, they, they were thinking that David cannot come in here. Listen to verse 7. It says, nevertheless, David took the stronghold of Zion. That is the city of David. Now, I want us to have a nevertheless attitude. You know, whatever has been proclaimed has been proclaimed. Nevertheless, we are possessing the land. Nevertheless, we are taking territory. Nevertheless, the things that God has promised us, we are possessing them. Nevertheless, we are possessing our possession. So there is a nevertheless attitude that we need to have. People have spoken. Nevertheless, we are standing on the promises of God. This thing will change. You know, God's plan for my life will be fulfilled. You know, God's assignment will be done. Nevertheless, so that's the attitude. In other words, people can speak to say, this is the boundary, this is a demarcation. It can't go further. I want you to have a nevertheless attitude. You don't have money. You know, your family is not rich. You know, you have failed many times. You know, nevertheless, nevertheless, I want us to pray right now in the name of Jesus. God, give us a nevertheless attitude that we will not allow any limitations. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Father, we are declaring right now that every limitation that has been set before us, that Father God it will have a mind, Lord Almighty God, to do it. That Father God, however, Lord, 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 Lord,
Hear us as we pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Now, beloved, I want us to do something. I want to read three scriptures. Uh, I want to project them on the screen so that you can see them, but I want us to read them right now. The first one is Mark chapter 5. Mark chapter 5. I want to show you something. You see, the whole point is to help you to believe that things can change. You know, God is able to turn things around. Mark chapter 5, verses 39 to 43. Verses 39 to 43. Listen to this. It says, uh, from the English Standard Version, And when he had entered, he said to them, Why are you making commotion and weeping? Uh, the child is not dead, but sleeping. This is Jairus' daughter. Uh, it says, they laughed at him, but he put them all outside and took the child's father and mother and those who were with him and went in where the child was. Uto verse 41, taking her by the hand, uh, he said to her, Talita Kumai, which means little girl, I say to you, arise. And immediately... Uh, the girl got up and began walking for she was 12 years of age and they were immediately overcome with amazement. Now, this is the first thing I want you to see. Jesus raising the dead. But I also what I want you to see is the levels of the dead. Okay, so I want us also to look at Luke chapter 7. Luke chapter 7 uh, verses 11. Keep in mind the story that I've just read. Verses 11 to verse 17. It says, soon afterward, he went to a, a, a town called Nian, and his disciples and a great crowd went with him. As he drew near to the gate of the town, behold, a man who, was, who had died was being carried out, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow, and a considerate crowd from the town was with her. And when the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her and said, do not weep. Then he came up and touched the buyer and the bearers stood still. And he said, young man, I say to you, arise. And the dead man uh, sat up and began to speak. Jesus gave him to his mother. Now, this is the second thing. The first one, the girl was dead at home and Jesus rose her up. Now, the second one, this young boy was on they were on the way to bury him on the way to the burial site you see now jesus met them on the way he raised him on the way okay he raised him on the way now i want to show you the third one john chapter 11 john chapter 11 uh, verses 38 to 44 John chapter 11, verses 38 to 44. Jesus deeply moved, came to the tomb. Uh, it was a cave and a stone lay in it. And Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, by this time there will be an order, for he had been dead four days. Jesus said to her, did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? They took away the stone and Jesus lifted his eyes. Father, thank you that you have heard me. I, I knew that you always hear me, but I said this on account of the people standing around and that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said these things, he cried out, Lazarus, come out. The man who had died came out, his hands and feet bound with his strap. So I want you to see this. Number one, the girl was dead, you know, and Jesus rose her up, but she was still at home. The second one was on the way to the burial site. Jesus raised him up. The third one was buried four days dead. Jesus rose him up. In other words, it doesn't matter how bad, you know, dead, deader, and deadest. Okay, there's no English like that, but get my point. Dead, dead, and one was dead, you know, dead that day. The other one was dead, uh, you know, on the way to burial. But the other one was the deadest, already, you know, 
uh, buried four days, um, almost uh, already stinking. Jesus said, okay, I will perform a miracle in all of them. I can raise all of them up. What am I saying? Your situation might be deadest. God is saying, I'm able to change things around. I can raise your Lazarus up. So whether your situation is a daughter of Jairus situation, whether it is, you know, this widow's son situation, or whether it's a Lazarus situation, God can turn it around. God can turn it around. Now, here's the thing. How did Jesus raise it up? He started with gratitude. Father, I thank you that you always hear me. So you need to learn to show gratitude even in the worst of times. Begin to thank him at least for breath. Thank him that you still have roof over your head. Thank him. You see, because God can raise the dead with God. All things are possible. Nothing shall be impossible with God. So I don't know, but God will help us with the English here. Okay, but God can turn it around. God can turn it around. So we have to believe it, beloved. So your situation, I want us to pray right now. Let us pray. I don't know what you are hearing, but there's resurrection power in God. God can turn it around. Let us pray. Father, you raise the dead. Lord, you perform miracles. Nothing is possible. in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we want to bless you. We want to honor Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. Beloved, I want to thank you for connecting once again. You know, um, we are in day number 18 tomorrow. We're doing day number 19. We're going for day 21 on Sunday. I want to encourage you, keep the fort. I know these are the days when the, the, the greatest temptation will come. The temptation to quit, the temptation, you know, to just, you know, you know what? Uh, but I don't want you to quit. I want to challenge you, don't quit. You know, keep your faith, you know, trust God. You know, even if it means we are huka, we are chongo six, but keep at it. Uh, the secret is be prayerful. You know, some of us are doing 21 days for the first time. And I want to congratulate you. I want to congratulate you and I want to encourage you. I mean, there's, there's three more days. There's three more days. Keep at it. You know, uh, trust God. God will see you through. God bless you. Let me pray for you as we break. Father God, I want to thank you. Lord Almighty God, as we break the fast, I pray for your children. Lord Almighty God, continue to minister to us. Continue Continue to minister hope, continue to minister life. Father God, out of all this, may we see you, O oh God, because when we see you, we will see ourselves, O oh God, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen.